Dr. Dermer. Dr. Dermer. Finally, after all these years, my Jewish mother can be proud. <laughs> I want to thank you for giving me the special honor of delivering the last commencement address of Richard Joel's remarkable tenure as president of Yeshiva University. Chazal teach us. Chazal teach us, teach us, v'ha'amidu talmidim harbe, raise up many disciples. Our sages understood that without Jewish education, there is no Jewish future. President Joel, you are one of the great Jewish educators of our time. So I say to you what I would say to an Israeli prime minister or general. Thank you for everything you have done to secure the Jewish future. Ladies and gentlemen, as you heard, I am not the first person in my family to receive a degree from Yeshiva University. My uncle graduated here in the 1950s, my sister in the 1980s, and my wife Rhoda was valedictorian of Stern College in 1996. <laughs> Rhoda loved her time here. She loved her teachers and her courses. She enjoyed studying for hours on the eighth floor of a stern building at 245 Lexington Avenue. And thank God she did, because if she would have spent less time studying and more time dating, there is no way I would have been lucky enough to marry her. But while this degree from YU is not a first, this commencement speech is. Last time I attended a commencement was my own graduation from the University of Pennsylvania in 1993. The speaker that day was the new first lady, Hillary Rodham Clinton. I don't remember, I don't remember what she said, but I do remember how I felt. I had no idea what I would be doing the next year, let alone for the rest of my life. I had no idea that I would move to Israel, let alone one day become Israel's ambassador to the United States. So all of you who have no clue what you'll be doing next year, let alone for the rest of your lives, relax. <laughs> See this as a time of opportunity a time to focus on what, on what gives you a sense of purpose. And to those who already have their lives all figured out, don't be too sure. Life often throws curveballs your way. When I was 15, I read a best-selling book by a very successful entrepreneur who had gone to the Wharton School of Business. I wanted to be an entrepreneur too. I wanted, so I decided to study there. But my life ended up taking a very different course. From an interest in business and finance, I became interested in public policy and politics, and later decided to move to Israel, determined to serve my new country. The funny thing is, I just saw the author of that best-selling book in Israel, and he lives not far from me in Washington. His book's called The Art of the Deal, and people call him President Donald Trump. I guess reading that book proved pretty useful after all. Ladies and gentlemen, when I was deciding what to speak about today, I looked at a few of the great commencement speeches. I watched Steve Jobs' riveting speech at Stanford a decade ago. I read Winston Churchill's famous address at Harrow in 1941. And of course, I saw Robert Kraft's unforgettable speech right here last year. But I quickly realized that just as all Jewish holidays essentially boiled down to they tried to kill us, they failed, let's eat, <laughs> so too all commencement addresses essentially boil down to follow your heart, failure is opportunity, and never give up on your dreams. 
Now, I could speak to you about how those words of wisdom have rung true in my own life as well. But I am not delivering a commencement speech at any university. And I do not serve as the ambassador of any country. I am here at Yeshiva University as the ambassador of Israel. I am... I am speaking at America's first Jewish university as the representative of the one and only Jewish state. So today on your graduation day, forgive me for not sharing my thoughts about your personal journey. I wish you all well. Instead, I want to share a few thoughts about our people's national journey. In 1934, Albert Einstein delivered the third commencement speech at what was then Yeshiva College. He spoke about the importance of an institution that would focus on both Jewish and general knowledge. He said that the Jewish people sustained itself through 2,000 years of severe hardship because, quote, it had regarded its tradition of love for the spiritual and the moral as its highest possession. And then Einstein asked your predecessors the following question. Are we certain that this love for the spiritual and the Jewish people will remain a living force if we do nothing to keep it alive in our children? We must ask Einstein's question again today. And we must appreciate the enormity of the challenge we face. Ladies and gentlemen, the Jewish people are an inherently spiritual people. Abraham did not become the father of our nation when he conquered a city, defeated an army, or founded an empire. He became the father of our nation when he found God. We learn, no applause for Abraham? Just a little applause. We learn in the Bible that Israel got its name because Jacob wrestled with an angel. Jews have been wrestling with God ever since, and Jews will never stop wrestling with God. As Eli Wiesel, Zichrono Levracha, once said, Jews can love God, Jews can hate God, but Jews can never ignore God. But the challenge we face today is whether increasing number of Jews will continue to see their heritage as little more than a collection of fairy tale like stories from the Bible, quaint family holidays, bagels and locks, and episodes of Seinfeld. They are proud Jews, to be sure, but are they proud of their Judaism? Are they proud of Jewish values? Do they even know what Jewish values are? Because when it comes to moral causes, like fighting for social justice and working for peace, too many Jews do not look to their own faith for inspiration and wisdom. They look elsewhere. They travel to the far reaches of the earth in their quest for moral answers without first looking for answers right at home. They read great books about justice and equality without knowing anything about what their book of books says about these values. And that is a great tragedy, because the Torah, our people's greatest treasure, is the very wellspring of these values, not just for Jews, but for all humanity. Graduates, there are many things exceptional about the Jewish people. There is our unique culture that combines genius with chutzpah to produce a quarter of the world's Nobel Prize winners and some of the world's greatest innovators. There is our unique impulse for tikkun olam, which has driven Jews disproportionately to movements that seek to better our world, from the labor movement a century ago to the civil rights movement in the 50s and 60s to all kinds of movements for social change today. But what makes our people truly exceptional is the faith we cling to and the morals it demands. The faith and moral heritage, that faith and moral heritage, 
represents our most cherished ideas and our greatest contribution to humanity. Jews should certainly take great pride in our remarkable achievements and vibrant culture. But above all, above all, Jews should be proud of our values. The Jewish people did not have to wait to read the collected works of Rousseau to learn about the fundamental equality of man. We only had to internalize the first parak of Breshi and its powerful statement, B'Tselem Elohim Baraltam, the most powerful statement ever made about social justice. Because if you truly believe that all are created in the image of God, and if you act according to that belief, you will treat your fellow man with dignity and respect, with decency and compassion. The Jewish people also did, not need to, also did not have to learn from other nations the importance of feeding the poor, healing the sick, being kind to the widow and orphan, and welcoming the stranger. We only need to heed the calls of our prophets and observe the commandments of our faith. And the Jewish people definitely do not need to hear lectures about peace from the moral midgets at the United Nations. <laughs> For it was our prophet Isaiah that preached the vision of peace that is inscribed on the walls of that building. Ladies and gentlemen, Einstein's question is as relevant today as it was 83 years ago. But to keep Judaism alive for many Jews, we must restore in Jewish, we must restore pride in Jewish values and Jewish ideas for a generation of Jews that knows little about either. That is why Yeshiva University is so important. And that is why each and every one of you is so important. Because this university has equipped you, like few others in our generation, to succeed in that mission. This will require more than merely tending your own garden. It will mean showing others its beauty. It will mean more than you being proud of Jewish values. It will mean you being a champion of Jewish values. Graduates, in so many ways, you are the most blessed generation of Jews in over 2,000 years. Now, I know that's hard to accept because we Jews tend to see the glass as 1 16th empty. <laughs> but it is true. You are blessed to live in a country like the United States. Yes, there is a serious problem of assimilation. Yes, anti-Semitism is still a danger. But for most of Jewish history, Jews were prevented from integrating into the life of their countries. When we could integrate, we usually faced a stark choice, either fully assim assimilate or stay true to your traditions. But in America, you do not face that choice. The blessing of America for the Jews can be summed up in less than a word, less than, a, less than even a letter. It's a hyphen, the hyphen that allows you to be both fully American and true to your faith. Yeshiva University is a marvelous testament to the power of the blessing of America. But your generation is doubly blessed, for you live at a time when you are witness to the miracle called Israel. Jewish sovereignty has been restored. Exiles have returned. Jerusalem has been reunited. Never to be divided again. <laughs> Collectively, Israel has provided the Jewish people with a voice, with a refuge, and most importantly, the power to defend themselves. Individually, Israel has made things possible that would have been unimaginable to your ancestors. If you want to pray at the Kotel, you only need to board a plane. If you want to spend a year studying in Israel, you only need to convince your parents to foot the bill. 
And if you want to make Aliyah, the choice is yours. Yes? Yes, the Iranian regime calls and works to destroy Israel. Yes, Israel has to stand ever vigilant against the forces of terror and fanaticism. But in the years ahead, always remember that your grandparents and their grandparents, going back over 20 centuries, would have given anything to trade their problems with yours. A hundred generations of Jews dreamed of living at a time when there would be a sovereign Jewish state. You have the privilege of living that dream. But with that privilege comes an awesome responsibility to secure that dream for generations to come. And that responsibility falls on each and every one of you because I am not the only ambassador here today. You are all ambassadors. For the rest of your lives, you will be ambassadors of Yeshiva University and the values it stands for, the values of the Jewish people. So live by those values. Be proud of those values. And as you go out into the world, champion those values. Instill your pride in others, in your coworkers, in your friends, and above all, in your children. Make them proud of the faith and values that have sustained our people for nearly 4,000 years. Make Judaism come alive for them, and in doing so, become a true partner in securing the Jewish future. Mazel Tov, thank you.